We are working on our sentence today. Before we start, though, what do you think the end of the book that the dandelions represent? What do you think the significance of the dandelion was? So they are living in a very stark, brown, desolate area with very little color, with very little but grasses growing. What do you think the daffodil represents? They planted it on their this roof of their seal, of their, their roof of their sod house. What is significant about the bright yellow dandelion? When she they don't see dandelions. They, see dandelions. they had them at home in Illinois. I mean, they don't really see dandelions. No. Unless there's wild gra wild grasses or wildflowers. But there didn't seem to be any in where we were at in Nebraska, just a lot of brown grass. So if you are looking, if you look outside at the green, you see the beautiful blooms where there's some color. If you can imagine that being just one sea of brown grass, what would you really wish for, hope for, desire, coal? Color, something besides grass. Was the mom having a hard time leaving her home? Was she sad? Why do you think when the little girl saw those daffodils growing in the middle of nowhere in town, did she get so excited? James. Yes, absolutely. Olivia. It would also make her mom happy. Make her mom happy. What do you think about the word hope? Do you think it gave the little girl hope that things would get better? A little flower represented hope in a very desolate area. Yes. Because it was a very difficult life. Put that away, please, Sam. Not an easy place to live. I would feel very, it would be very hard to live in a place by myself like that with no one around for about an hour and all I saw was brown grass. So I think the little girl was hoping that the dandelions would, yes, bring happiness. I think in the story it just represented hope. That something could grow just like the family could grow in happiness, the daffodil could grow and bring them happiness with the beautiful blooms. So I just wanted to talk about that. It's a long story, but interestingly, it goes hand in hand with social studies, and it gives us a perspective what it was like for these people as they were discovering the new territories. Not an easy life, the pioneer life. With that said, let's break down our sentence. It shouldn't take long. Yes. Oh, mares. Thank you. I was thinking the course is Maine. Was it paying attention? Thank you. You guys keep me on my toes. Thank goodness. If you guys did, then what would happen? <laughs> All right, let us find. If the blue works, the purple does not. There are three nouns. Name a noun, Grayson. Yes. Hold on, let me get this better. There we go. All right. So, sky is one noun. What is another noun, Emmy? 
head up. One more. James. What is it that describes a noun? What is what describes a noun, Owen? An adjective. An adjective. Do we have an adjective in this sentence? Yes. What is it? That's correct. That is correct. Or a mane's tail. <laughs> All right, let me see. Let's talk about a verb. Do we have a verb in our sentence? We have more than one, actually. We have two. Jeremiah. Play. Very good. What is our other verb, Emma? Play. Yeah. Very, very good. Now. What is a pronoun? What is a pronoun? Olivia. Um, something that is a name or has a capital letter? Nope. That's a noun. And if it's capital, it's a proper noun. But a um, pronoun is hand in hand with the noun. Ella. Um, like, um, a word that is taking place of a, or a noun, yes, or proper noun mostly, yes. So, Ella, do you see a pronoun in the sentence? Yes. What is it? Us is correct. So when we look at the word us, who is us? Mare's tail clouds wave in the sky and the grass saying around us. Who is us? Cole. Like the it's a family. So instead of rattling off all of the names, you just condense it with a pronoun. In this case, us. All right. Conjunction. When Jean, would you say? Yes. So would you say and combines two complete sentences? So, mares, tail, clouds, wave in the sky. Is that a complete sentence? Or in this case, a clause. The grass sang around us. Is that a complete sentence? It is. So this conjunction is combining two complete clauses. Does anybody know what kind of sentence that is? Grayson. Um, Jonathan. What's that? Well, they both are independent sentences. Is it, what kind of sentence is it? It's a particular type of sentence, M. Compound? Yes. It's a compound sentence, meaning it has two complete clauses that can stand on their own, combined with a conjunction. Very good. All right. Let's complete this. What about an article? What is the article in a sentence? Tessa. The. I'm going to write article. I'm just going to write art. Because remember, an article is always before a what. What is it always in front of? Machine. A noun. Yes, in front of grass. Very 
we're good. All right, I think we have just one word left. We got two. Around. Yes, around and in, and they both are what? Around and in. Describing a location, which would be a what, Luke? Emma, a preposition. Very good. I'm just going to write prep. Very good. I think that's it. Yep. That was easy. Very simple little sentence. All right. What we're going to do now, do you want, let's, So far, I think this book is very boring. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 Yes. I'm hoping it gets a little bit better. Because I'm thinking it's really boring right now. So this big library is going to get built. So that is what we got to get through the boring part. Do you want me to continue it? Yes. No. Yes. 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 Raise your hand yeah. if you want me to continue. Oh, a lot of you. Has anyone ever, has you, have you read these books? So it gets a little better after a while? Yeah. Gets a little more action involved? Yeah. The hard part is getting to the action because right now I think it's really boring. All right, let's give it a little more time and see what happens. I do think it's going to be fun, but it just has a very slow start. And that makes it hard. So we don't have, we got, we've got about 10 minutes. I will read, and let's keep our fingers crossed, it gets better. So remember, they're crafting, designing, and finishing this big, amazing library. It's like a huge library. Yes, Cole? Can we, uh, can we draw while we wait? Yes. As long as you're not goofing around, and you're listening, All right, Kyle fist bumped and knuckle knocked his way up the bus aisle in his usual seat. Almost everyone wanted to say hey to him, except, of course, Sierra Russell. Like always, Sierra, who was also a seventh grader, was sitting in the back of the bus, her nose buried in a book. Probably one of those girl, one of one of those about girls who lived in tiny homes on a prairie or something. Huh? I wonder what that would be. <laughs> That's funny. Could be Laura Ingle on Little House on the Prairie. Nice shirt, said Akini Hughes as Kyle slid into the seat beside her. Thanks. It used to be Mike. Doesn't matter. It's still cool. Akini's mother was Asian, her dad Irish. She had very long jet black hair, extremely blue eyes, and a ton of freckles. What are you playing, Kyle asked, because Akimi was frantically working on the controls of her PSP 3000. Squirrel Squad, said Akimi. One of Mr. Lemoncello's best, said Kyle, who had the same game on his PlayStation. The one he couldn't play with for a week. Why couldn't he play with it for a week? Why can't he play his games for a week? Owen. Yep, whoops. You need a hand? Nah. Watch out for the beehives. I know about the beehives, Kyle. I'm just saying, how many people love it when somebody comes and tries to tell you what to do when you're in the middle of a game? Who finds that really annoying? <laughs> or when somebody comes in when you're watching a movie or a TV and they tell you what happens next? Oh, that is the worst. That is the worst thing ever. Or they say, oh, that person, blah, 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 and I'm like, Thank you. I am so happy you told and ruined my movie. So, <laughs> yes. Yes, what? I cleared level six, finally. Awesome, Kyle did not mention that he was up to level 27. Akimi was his best friend. Friends don't gloat to friends, true. When I shot the squirrels at the Falcon, said Akimi, the pilot parachuted. If a squirrel bit the pilot in the bottom, I got 50-point bonus. Whoa. Whoa. 
Yes, in Mr. Lemoncello's catapulting critters game, there were all sorts of wacky jokes. The falcons weren't birds, they were F-16 falcon fighter jets. And the squirrels? They were crazy, totally bonkers, with swirly, whirly pool eyes. They flew through the air, jabbering gibberish as they bit people. Oh, that sounds like fun. What does the squirrel remind you of? I just automatically went to what? Grayson. Yes, I missed you, Lissies. This was one of the main reasons why Kyle thought everything that came out of Mr. Lemoncello's Imagination Factory, board games, puzzles, video games, was amazingly awesome. For Mr. Lemoncello, a game just wasn't a game if it wasn't a little goofy around the edges. So did you pick up the bonus code, asked Kyle, huh? In the freeze frame there, Akimi studied the screen. Turn it over, Akimi did. See that number tucked into the corner? Type that in the next time the home screen asks you for a password. Why, what happens? You'll see. Akimi slugged him in the arm. What? Well, don't be surprised if you start flinging flaming squirrels on level, level seven. Get out. Okay, so he's giving things away. Annoying. Try it, you'll see. I will this afternoon. So, did you write your extra credit essay? Huh? What essay? Hmm, the one that's due today. Uh-oh. About the new public library? Refresh my memory. Kimi sighed, because the old library was torn down 12 years ago. The 12, 12 years old who, the 12, 12 years old who write the best essays on why I'm excited about the new public library will get to go to the library, lock in this Friday night. Whoa. So they, wh there's a contest apparently and 12 people who win get to get locked into the library for the night. Who has ever seen Night at the Museum? That's what it reminds me of. I would never, ever want to get locked into a museum at night. Yeah. That would be freaky. <laughs> huh? The winners will spend the night in the new library before anybody else even gets to see the place. Oh, is this like that movie Night at the Museum? Well, the books come alive and chase people around in junk? No. But there will probably be free movies and food and prizes and games. All of a sudden, Kyle was interested. Hmm, how is he gonna write an essay before the morning is over? So exactly, this is chapter four. No titles, no pictures, sorry friends. So exactly, what kind of games are we talking about? I don't know, said Akimi. Fun book gift stuff, I guess. And do you think this library will have equally new computers? Definitely. Wi-Fi? Probably. Kyle nodded slowly. And this all takes place Friday night? Yep. Akimi, I think you just discovered a way for me to, be, to shorten my most recent groundation. Your what? My game deprived parental punishment. Kyle figured being locked in a library with computers on Friday night would be better than being stuck at home without any gaming gear at all. Can I borrow a pen and sheet of paper? What, you're going to write your essay now on the bus? Better late than never. They're due in homeroom, Kyle, first thing. Fine, I'll keep it brief. Akimi shook her head and handed Kyle a notebook and a pen. The bus bounced over a speed bump into the school driveway. He would need to make his essay really, really short. He was hoping the 12 winners would be randomly pulled out of a hat or something, and like the lottery people always said in their TV commercials, you just had to be in, be in it to win it. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Char Charles Chittington was sitting in his father's library working with college students who'd been hired to help him polish up extra credit essays. He was dressed in his typical school uniform, khaki, khaki slacks, blue blazer, button-down shirt, and tastefully striped tie. How would you wear, like to wear a tie every day for school? Nothing. A tie and a blazer and khaki pants. Nothing. No, no. 
Never. The girls probably would have to wear a dress every day. That's what a uniform is. All right, we need to turn her. What are we looking at? We aren't talking. He was the only student at, at exam, Alexandriaville Middle School who dressed that way. What's a big word for library, Charles, Charles asked his tutor. Teachers love big words. Book repository. Bigger please. Um, Anthemium. Perfect. It's such a weird word. They'll have to look it up. Charles made the, made the change, saved the file, and sent his document off to the printer. Your dad sure reads a lot, said the ELA tutor, admiring the leather-bound books lining the walls of Mr. Chillington's home library. Knowledge is power, said Charles. It's one of my, our fundamental, fundamental family philosophies. Another was, we eat losers for breakfast. Well, that's nice. Kyle and Akimi climbed off the bus and headed into the school. You know, said Akimi, my dad told me the library people had, had like a bazillion different architects doing drawings and blueprints that they couldn't share with each other. How come? To keep everything super secret. My dad and his firm did the front door, and that was it. The second they stepped into Mr. Cameron's classroom for homework period, Miguel Fernandez shouted, hey Kyle, check it out, bro. He held up a clear plastic binder, maybe two inches thick. I totally aced my essay, man. The library dealio? Yeah, I put in pictures and charts, plus a whole section about the ancient library of Alexandria, Egypt. Since this is Alexandriaville, Ohio, Cool, said Kyle. Miguel Fernandez was super enthusiastic about everything. He was also president of the school library's AIDS society. Hey Kyle, you know what they say about libraries? Uh, not really. They have something for every chapter of your life. While Kyle groaned, the second bell rang. All right, everybody, said Mrs. Dana Cameron, Kyle's homeroom teacher. Time to turn in your extra credit essays. She started walking up and down the rows of desks. The judges will be meeting in the faculty lounge this morning to make the preliminary cut. Ah, uh, thought Kyle. There were judges. This was not going to be a bingo ball drawing like the library. Mr. Keeley, the teacher lowered, hovered over his desk. Did you write an essay? Yeah, sort of. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Either you wrote an essay or you didn't. Kyle half-heartedly handed her his hastily scribbled sheet of paper. And unfortunately, Mrs. Cameron read it out loud. Oh boy. Balloons, there might be balloons. The classroom erupted with laughter. Oh my goodness, that's all he wrote. Until Mrs. Cameron did that tilt down her glasses and glare over them things she did to terrify everyone into silence like this. Yes, ma'am, we were supposed to write why we were excited about the grand opening, and well, balloons are always my favorite part. I see, said Mrs. Cameron. You know, Kyle, your brother Curtis wrote excellent essays when he was in my class. Yes, Mrs. Cameron, mumbled Kyle. Mrs. Cameron sighed contently. Please give him my regards. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Cameron walked on to the next desk. Miguel eagerly handed her his thick booklet. Very well done, Miguel. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron. Kyle heard an odd noise out in the parking lot. A puttering, clunking, clanking sound. Oh my, said Mrs. Cameron. I wonder if that's him. She hurried to the window and pulled up the blind. All the kids in the classroom followed her. And then she thought, out in the visitor parking lot, a car that looked like a giant red boot on wheels. It had a strip of notched black boot sole for its bumper. Thick shoelaces crisscrossed their way up to the windshield to the top of the 10 foot tall boot. It looks like the red boot from the, that game, said Miguel, family frenzy. Kyle nodded. Family Frenzy was Mr. Lemoncello's first and probably most famous game. The red boot was one of the 10 tokens 
you could pick to move around the board. It sounds like uh, what? Monopoly. Yes. Very good. It's Mr. Lemoncello, gasped Kyle, his heart racing. What's he doing here? It was just announced, said Mrs. Cameron this evening, and Mr. Luigi Lemoncello himself will be the final judge of what? Your library essays. Uh-oh. I bet you he's wishing he wrote a better essay. All right. That is going to be it. I would love if Jeremiah would open up the door. It's getting very stuffy again. We are going to end language arts and start social studies.